have such a beautiful hair, Lily. Just like your mother's. Thank you, Grandma. I really love when you cut my hair. It feels nice. <laughs> I'm glad, my dear. It's one of my favorite things to do. It reminds me of when I used to cut your mother's hair. Oh, I almost forgot. I have something special for you today. Really? What is it, Grandma? This is a very special book. It's called The Little Prince. Your grandpa gave it to me. It looks old, yet beautiful. What is it all about? It's about a little prince that your grandpa met at the desert when he got lost. He said that the little prince travels from planet to planet, meeting all kinds of interesting people. But most importantly, it teaches us about love and the things that truly matter. Can I read it now? Of course, my dear. One time, when your grandpa crashed his plane, the little prince appeared out of nowhere. Ah! This plane is going to take forever to fix. Why do these things always happen to me? Ah, hello. Oh, hello there. I didn't see you coming. What are you doing? I'm trying to fix my plane. It's broken. Hmm? It doesn't look broken. Trust me, it is. Wait, are you an artist? Ah, no. But I like to draw. And can you draw me a ship? A ship? Yes. yes. All right, let's see. Not like that. It needs to be small and gentle. Oh. Well, how about this one? Hmm. Too old. I need a young ship. All right. Let's try again. How about this one? Wow. That's perfect. Thank you. So, what brings you here, kid? Well, I come from a very small planet called B612. I'm exploring the universe. B612? A very small planet? I never heard of it. Yes, it is very small. You wouldn't find it on any map. Whoa, really? Could you tell me more about your planet? Well, picture this. It is the size of a house. And there's this magnificent rose that I lovingly take care of day in and day out. What? A rose? Yes, my rose, my dearest rose. She's not just special to me. She's my whole world. Sounds like a wonderful place. Would you like to tell me more about your planet? I'd love to. On his tiny planet, the little prince tended to his rose with great care. My dear Rose, you look so radiant and lovely to me. Of course I do. I am the most beautiful Rose in the universe. You know, sometimes you can be quite vain. Vain? Me? Oh, please. I simply speak the truth. But you are so demanding. You ask for too much attention. Well, I just want to be cared for, to be loved. I understand, but I feel there's so much more to explore beyond our little planet. I long to explore and uncover the mysteries of other worlds. Will you ever come back to me? Of course. I promise, Rose. I may not be here, but you will be always in my heart. Then go, my dear little prince. Explore the universe and come back to tell me all about it. I definitely will. Farewell, my dear Rose. On his journey, the little prince encountered a king who ruled over his tiny kingdom with great authority. 
a king who believes he rules over everything and everyone. Who are you? I'm the king of this planet. All that you see before you is under my rule. But there's no one else here. That doesn't matter, kid. You are my subject now. Subject? What does that even mean? That means you must obey my commands. I'm the ruler, you are my subject. But what commands do you have? There's nothing to rule over. I command you to... to... See? There's nothing to command, is there? No, there isn't. But I'm still the king. You may be the king. But what is a good ruler without subjects to rule over? Perhaps you're right. Perhaps it's not about ruling. It's about the people we rule over. Exactly. Farewell, Your Majesty. Farewell, my subject. Moving on from the king's planet, the little prince found himself on an asteroid inhabited by a vain man who is obsessed with admiration and self-importance. Behold, I am the most magnificent being in the universe. Who are you? Me? I am the vain man, the epitome of beauty and elegance. Admire me, for I am truly extraordinary. <laughs> Admire you? But why? Because I am the greatest. I demand admirations of worship from all who behold me. But what's the point of seeking adoration? The point? The point is to delight in the glory of one's own magnificence, to rebel the adorations of others. That seems lonely. Lonely? No, no, no. I am surrounded by my own greatness. But True companionship comes from genuine connections, not shallow praise. Perhaps, perhaps you're right, little prince. Farewell. May you find what you seek. Thank you. Farewell, Bainman. Continuing his journey, the little prince arrived on an asteroid inhabited by a lonely drunkard who seek peace in alcohol. Hello. What are you doing? Just drinking. To forget. Forget? Forget what? Everything. The pain. The sadness. But... Drinking won't solve any of your problems. It only makes them worse. But do you know, little one? You don't understand. The emptiness. The regret. I may not understand everything. But I know there is hope. You can choose to change your path, seek help, and find peace. Peace? I've never felt that. Well, let me help you remember. We can do it together. You? You will help me? Of course. No one should have to face their struggles alone. Thank you. Thank you, little friend. Journeying further. The little prince arrived on an asteroid inhabited by a busy businessman who claims to own the stars. What are you doing? It's counting the stars. They are all mine, you know. Yours? Whoa! How can that be? Simple. I own them because I've claimed them in my ledgers. They are all part of my large empire. But. How can you own something so vast and distant? Kid, it's not about distance. It's about ownership. And I own everything I can count. But what's good in owning the stars if you can touch them or, or feel their light? It's not about touching or feeling. It's about possessing. And possession is a power. Power? But what power is there owning something? You can never truly have. Well, I suppose there's no real power in it. But it's the principle of the thing. Oh, I see. Well, good luck with your counting. Yes, yes. Goodbye, little new On yet another asteroid, 
The little prince came across a solitary lamplighter whose duty was to light a single lamp each evening. Hello. Why do you light that lamp? It is my duty. Every day, I light the lamp at sunset and extinguish it at sunrise. But why? What's the point of lighting the lamp on such a small planet? I don't know. It's just what I've always done. It's my purpose. But does it bring you any joy? No, it's just endless, pointless. Hmm, duty without fulfillment. That sounds lonely. It is, but it's all I know. You deserve better than this camp writer. You deserve to find meaning in your work, to feel fulfilled in your purpose. Hmm, do you think so? Of course I do. And I will help you find it. Thank you, little friend. Thank you. Continuing his journey, the little prince arrived on an asteroid inhabited by a solitary geographer who claims to know everything about the universe but has never been explored it. Hello, what do you do here? I'm the geographer of this planet. I study and map the universe. Wow! Have you explored all the places you've mapped? Uh, no, I haven't. That's not my job. But how can you map places you've never been to? It's easy. I received reports from explorers and I compiled them in the map. But that's not the same as experiencing the places yourself. Experience is overrated. Knowledge is what matters. Knowledge without understanding is worthless. How can you claim to know everything about the universe if you've never seen it with your own eyes? Well, I suppose there's some truth to that. I'm so sorry. But I believe there's more to learn from exploration than from books and maps. Perhaps you're right. Maybe it's time I ventured beyond this map and discover the world myself. I think that would be a wonderful idea, geographer. Thank you, young traveler. You've given me much to think about. Venturing further on his journey, the little prince encountered a wise and gentle fox, who teach him the importance of building meaningful connections and taming one's own heart. Hello. Who are you? I'm Fox. I know my TV. Hello, Fox. I am the Little Prince. I came from a very tiny planet called B612. Ah, B612. Tell me, why you come here? I am exploring the universe and seeking to understand the world around me. Hmm, another question indeed. But remember, it's not enough to see with the eye. One must also see with the heart. Huh? What do you mean? To truly understand something, you must stay. You must form a bond. One thing that goes beyond mere observation. Hmm? How does one think something? Of course, with patience, kindness, and trust. And most importantly, with love. Love. I see. And once you think something, it becomes unique and special to you forever. Thank you, Fox. You taught me a valuable lesson. It was a pleasure, you can see. Uh, can you help me go back to my planet? Yes. My time will send me back to where you came from. One sees clearly with the heart. What is essential is inevitable to the eye. The little prince taught me many things during his brief visit. He taught me to see beyond the surface, to cherish the beauty of the invincible, and to appreciate the simple joys of life. Through his stories and his wisdom, 
He touched my heart in ways I never thought possible. He showed me the meaning of friendship, love, and understanding. And though he's gone, his presence lingers, like a gentle whisper in the wind, reminding me to always keep an open mind and a compassionate heart. Farewell, dear little prince. Your journey may have ended, but your spirit will live on forever in the hearts of those you touch. Amazing, Grandma! Thank you for the book! You're welcome, Lily. Just remember, the most important things in life are often invisible to the eye. Always look with your heart. Yes, I know, Grandma. Pain is going to take forever to fix. Sheesh! But drinking won't solve them yet. Does it bring you any joy? Oh, it's not bad. Oh, it's not bad. Oh, Let's see. Like that. Get inside, Get inside. I don't think.